Okay, I've got another little machining project I'm going to try to get done today. Uh, and this is actually just uh, a tray to hold uh, some collets that I have. Um, and I just wanted to show you my setup. Um, this vise is not ideal. Uh, basically, I put the hard jaws back in it. And the way that I set up, that I found quickest to do this, um, and I make, I make quite a few of these to actually hold things, and it may not be this particular thing, but the whole idea is you want a flat piece of uh, stock to basically barely be gripped. And like I said before, I, I got these long parallels here, um, and these work really good. They're almost exactly the right height uh, for this particular vise. So basically what I do, and this is a, this is not a real precision job. Um, this is kind of just a tool for my toolbox. Just got to snug it up in there. I'm going to tap it a few times with a hammer to make sure it's seated. And if you have a really good precision ground uh, parallels, and you're not using one of the pull down vices when you actually tighten this piece of aluminum up it'll make pretty much an equal space again you'll want to check and make sure but for me these parallels almost always especially when i'm clamping aluminum they'll slide right out of the way uh, if i'm not doing through hole i'll usually just leave them in um, and this isn't a through hole project but there's no point in leaving them in there so we're going to run this job real quick um, I'm going to go grab this out of uh, on a USB key. We're going to throw it in the DNC and run the job. Okay, we're going to use the hammer to basically uh, find our point. Uh, my point's right here. I didn't do it on this part, but normally I do mark. Uh, usually when I'm holding the piece over in Fusion 360, I try to mark exactly where the uh, uh, work coordinate system is at. On this one, it's going to be on this top corner here, and that's pretty much normally what I do. Occasionally I'll use the back corner um, if I'm using uh, a jaw as a reference because on my vise the rear jaw is fixed, the front one is not. Uh, so that's the only change. But on this picker part, this is going to be our work offset. Okay, we've got everything set up uh, and you know same as all other programs basically we're going to make sure our z height uh, since this is the first time i'm actually running this, this particular program uh, we've got optional stop turned on so it's going to stop at each um, section and uh, this should go pretty smoothly if not we'll, we'll restart i've got several of these blanks cut out uh, i plan on i need two of them to actually be final uh, to go in my toolbox uh, but I've got several blanks cut out. Uh, we'll make a couple extra for um, some folks that had requested them.
primary issue, uh, caused the tool crash. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and run this piece just to verify the program so that I don't mess up any more uh, steel. I forgot I put a number, a, a new tool in 14 and I didn't set the work offset. Uh, but now that's all corrected. Uh, no damage other than that. Basically press the uh, the bit up into the, uh, the collet. You know, two dollar bit, gone. Put a new one in, should be good to go. We're gonna try it again. Much better. Okay, here's the uh, the R16 holder. Uh, this is, should be the final. Um, I sped up a couple things that uh, were slow, and I had a chamfer. Um, I'm going to show you the test piece real quick. This is basically it. Um, so basically, you put all your collets in this, put in your tool tray, tool chest and uh, it'll keep them up where you can actually see the size and grab a hold of them really quick. Okay, this is running part number two. I've increased the, uh, the feed rate on the helical uh, just to make these complete faster. I'm still not really running the cutter really hard. Um, and these should turn out nice. The, the prototype one that I made, it, it works. Uh, I think the chamfer that I added onto the uh, the, the main hole that'll help kind of center up the uh, coil a little quicker when you set it in the in the tray. Okay, this is the finished collet holder. Uh, it turned out really well. This is a piece of scrap aluminum, um, but basically uh, the biggest issue that I had. Right at the end there, um, I actually had an issue with uh, tool holder 17 and ended up having to flip tools and that was that chamfering tool, the one that cuts these chamfers. Um, once I got that resolved, this ran pretty quick. Um, I ran two plates. Uh, the first plate that I did that actually crashed and had errors, um, that took about 17 minutes. The second plate I got that cut down to about 9 minutes. Um, and this last plate, which is I'm considering the final cut. Uh, this took about four minutes and 30 seconds uh, and that's just basically optimizing everything not having the optional stop uh, button on uh, and this one actually run unattended and it was really quick um, you know again this is just you know real basic stuff this was not a, a, a tolerance critical part it's just something I needed around the shop to uh, 
hold the cullet sets that I have. Anyway, I hope you liked the videos. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me a message. Thanks for watching.